Hello everybody. In this touch designer tutorial, you'd be learning about how to create these all patterns by using some of the most interactive utility that we have been using, which is nothing but a mouse. These mouse movements can actually create some of the best patterns that you could ever imagine. It has so much of variety that you can keep on playing around and it will just produce some of the most fascinating results for you. Well, what else can be done? This mouse can pretty much be replaced with the leap motion sensor. This mouse can also be replaced with uh, the Kinect or even other sensors that are available in the current market. Well, so you would be wondering what it takes to produce this, how it can be created. And there are so many other questions that you would be having. This tutorial pretty much answers every question that you would have in your mind that how to create some of the best things. So you would be wondering what it really takes. Well, the model is very, very simple. And this simple model has been designed with few basic components of Touch Designer. Let's just go around and create this entire network. Well, so before we begin with the tutorial, I actually wanted to give you an idea of my YouTube channel, which is Digital Abstract. I would really like if you could please like and subscribe to my channel. That's like a token of appreciation. It feels really good, you know, when somebody likes it, somebody uh, makes a comment stating that, oh, this is really nice. We learn a lot. Um, all of these comments are really encouraging. I'm telling you, uh, when I see comments coming around, it really brings a lot of smile on my face. Yeah, so if you could please like and subscribe, that would be amazing. All right, so let's get going with the blank canvas. So first thing first, let's go around and add a circle. Now for this circle, we will keep the alpha as completely zero. Let's have the border width as 0 0.01. Let's change the border color to a blue color. Done. The other thing that we need to do is let's have the center. So let's have the center for x-axis, we'll have it as 0.3, and for y-axis, we'll make it as minus 0.3. Done. The other thing that you'd see is we want to have a mouse interaction here, right? So let's go to chops, and let's go as mouse in. So by using mouse in, you can actually get pretty much x-axis and y-axis. So if I drag my cursor up, so you can see the values are changing here. If I move my mouse towards the x-axis, so it changes the values from minus one to plus one. Similar is the case, if I move my mouse up to down, and similarly, I get the respective values. So what we do is, all we have to do is the radius. We need to decide the radius based on the movement of the mouse, right? Let's go and drop the TX to the radius X as chop reference, right? So as soon as we do that, you can see there is a movement coming up, right? Oh, one thing that we really need to do is let's go to common, change the resolution to 1024 by 1024, and let's have the pixel format as 32 bit, right? Once this is done, so we have, as you can see, we have set the values for the X. So as you can see, there is a movement happening and with every movement, the radius X is changing. So radius X is nothing but picking up the values from TX. Now let's pick TY and put it up as radius Y. The moment I do that, you can see the change coming in, right? And this is where something good is going to happen. So now what we do is let's go and use the null. Now let's go with a feedback loop. In feedback loop, all we need is a feedback. Then uh, let's have blur for now. We would also have the level. Then we'll have transform. And then we'll have composite. And then we'll have the RGB key. That's it. And this is the most simplest network that we would actually see here, right? Now, what we do is let's enable a feedback loop by doing very basic things. And let's have it as add. And as you can see, 
there's already something started to pop up. Now here what we could do is we can disable the blur, which we don't need it. Let's go to feedback. Let's apply the reset pulse. And yeah, there you go. There is something already coming up. But now this is where the transform is going to play a good role for us. Let's go and reduce the scale to 0.95. By doing this, we already have started coming closer to the objective that we have in our mind. Now what we do is, let's use the rotation. As soon as we use rotation, and there is a pattern started to flow up. And you can see how easy it is to create such a beautiful design that you can actually install it in every possible area, you know, like you can you can set it up for kids and uh, but you know, just drag off the mouse, they would start playing around and they would do a lot. Now, there are other good uh, rotation angles that we have. Let's try with 172. So 172, you can see how the rotation of mouse is really bringing some of the good effect that you could actually observe. And this is where the power comes from. Now, the other thing that you could do is you can use ABS time dot seconds to have automatic rotation enabled. And by doing that, you do not have to change the rotation angle. It will, it will keep on changing uh, with your timelines. So every time when you move your mouse, you would have a different rotation angle and all of your patterns will turn out to be really nice. And you can see here with very few movements, I'm actually able to create some of the most engaging uh, experiences for the users. And which is what I, I actually wanted to bring out. And there is really good stuff happening. See, you can say with every movement, I'm able to change the angles, the rotation, the size, the scale of circle, and it's producing some of the best results that I could ever expect. And which is what we get it with Touch Designer. The other thing that you can try is uh, you can enable the polygon. With increasing the polygon, you can have the triangles coming around. Uh, then you can increase it. So you can have the square. Uh, here is the hexagon. And by hexagon, you can see some of the good patterns coming up, right? Now let's reduce it to four sides and you can see the squares coming in. So again, this actually allows you a lot of freedom to produce some of the best output. Um, for now, um, this is what I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot about this and try it out or uh, share it on your social media. I would really like if you could tag me, uh, let me know about how the tutorial went, what did you learn out of it. I would, I would really appreciate that. Well, this is what we have for now. Uh, I, I wish you goodbye and uh, we'll see you in next tutorial.